If you wanna make money online pursuing your passion, I recently did a video sharing my top tips on how to start a blog and make money online. And so this video is gonna be answering your questions from that video. So if you haven't seen that video, you gotta go watch it, click the link down below. So now I'm answering the questions that you guys left on that video right here, right now. So first question's from Kim. I know collaborating is important with YouTubers, but how would you suggest going about that? I'd love to do some collabs, recipe swaps with other YouTubers, but as a small channel, I feel like bigger channels won't want to because they won't gain many subs from me advice. This is an awesome question, Kim. Uh, so doing collaborations with other YouTubers is an awesome, awesome way to gain more subscribers for your channel. Now, since the objective of doing a collaboration is to get something out of it, you have to have something to give the channel that you're going to be doing a collaboration with. That being said, I have been offered money to do collaborations. I have never taken them up on that offer. I'm a part of a network kin community and they ask us creators to look at their roster of other creators, see which ones have similar number of subscribers as we do and which ones ones we want to do a collaboration with. They then facilitate kind of the relationship, who would be good working together. We all kind of have subscriber levels on the, a similar playing field. Uh, sometimes someone who has less subscribers but more views may do a collaboration with someone that has more subscribers but less views. Those two don't always add up. So tip number one, be a part of a network, look at what other channels are a member of that network and then use your network contact to facilitate that relationship. Tip number two is to rely on your friends and the community that you're a part of. Now, if you're a fitness blogger or YouTuber, I hope that you are watching your other uh, friends who also have blogs and fitness videos. And even if they're not friends, you know, your competitors, I don't wanna call them that, but your peers, people doing similar work as you. Leave comments, let them know if you really liked a video, um, give them support, give them feedback. I like to follow uh, all the different blogs that I read on Instagram and Facebook, and you know, I'll almost communicate, I'll have conversations with them just online. Some of them I've never even met, but I feel like I know them because we have had so many correspondences online. And then when the time is right, do not be afraid to ask them if they want to collaborate. Now, that being said, I go back to my first point, make sure that you have something to offer them. If you don't have any subscribers, if you don't have any videos, that is not the right time to go and ask to collaborate. You have to have built up somewhat of a channel, somewhat of a community of your own. Doesn't mean that you have to have the same numbers, but you have to be able to offer something to the channel that you wanna collaborate with. Next question, Amber N asked if I would recommend Blogspot or Blogger for blogging, and my answer is probably not. Uh, why don't you just start using the best? Um, WordPress is kind of the industry standard for a great search engine optimization, and it's easy to use um, different templates uh, with WordPress. Third question comes from Lethal Leslie, and she says, you didn't really say how to make money blogging and doing YouTube videos. Can you explain that part, please? So, Leslie, this is a great question. I thought I answered this, but I probably didn't answer it as well as I thought. So you can make money starting out by the ads on your YouTube videos. Obviously, you have to have a lot of views on your videos to make good money from just that because it's per thousand views. Uh, I do not make a living alone off of the ads that I make on my YouTube videos. I also have a blog. Similarly, I am part of the Mode Network, which is formerly Glam, and I have ads on my blog. Again, I do not make enough money between those two things to make a living doing this. Uh, since I'm a personal trainer, I do make a little bit of money teaching classes, but the bulk of the money that I make comes from sponsorships, whether they're six months, eight months, or a year from companies like Adidas and Essentia, or they come from campaigns that sometimes are just one video uh, with you know a different company like Silk, Love Beats, I did one with Vitacost, I've done a ton of them over the years. And the other way is that I'm now kind of recognized as being a on-camera fitness personality, so now I do get hired for spots for brands uh, doing videos on their own YouTube channels, um, like with Listerine. So I have my ads on YouTube, I have my ads ads on my blog, I have my sponsorships on my YouTube channel, I have my campaigns, 
I count those as being different. I also have my, I guess, acting work where I act as like a host. And then lastly, I have my products. So I have my book, I have my t-shirts, um, I have, you know, I don't, I don't really make money off of affiliate stuff, but I used to be an affiliate of the Tone It Up program. I'm not anymore, but so, you know, you can make money through different products. As this year goes on, I'm trying to transition away from all the sponsorships and focusing more on my own products. And you guys will be able to see those really soon with my sub club. Um, so I hope this answered your question a little bit better. Next question is from the Purely Twins who are also members of the Fitfluential community, as am I, so go check out their blog. Uh, they say, we're slowly working on making our YouTube videos better. You guys have been, good job. We'd love to know your thoughts on microphones. That is what we struggle with. So I had a microphone that was a little lavalier mic and I can't find it. So that's what happens, I guess. Sometimes you misplace things. So I'm gonna give you guys the next best thing. So uh, I have a boom microphone. This goes right on top. And this microphone has two directions. It's either gonna have a wide pickup or it's gonna directly pick you up. So I use this and then my videographer also has another type of microphone, which if you have good editing equipment you can use. Um, this is just an H1 handy recorder that my videographer uses. So the audio records separately and you have to import it separately from your video and then sync it up. But the audio is pretty good quality and that's what we use in most of my videos. That's what you're hearing. You're hearing um, the H1 handy recorder. Um, the only downside is that you do have to match up the audio. So if you're using something like iMovie, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging than if you're using something like a, uh, a Final Cut. Next question is from Stephanie Johnson. She said, you mentioned good lighting briefly. Can you talk about what you use for your lighting in your videos? So I usually like to use natural light. Um, I'm gonna show you guys in a second how I shoot. Um, but also this light right here, it's only $40. Um, you just kind of add in some batteries in the back. You have to get a tripod to put it on, but you could just put it on a, a bookshelf and then you can control the intensity, how bright it is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you just face this on you, obviously not this bright, but to kind of get rid of some of those shadows, um, good lighting really helps make your videos and your photos look phenomenal. So to really just get some free natural light, um, this is how, what you're gonna do. This is not how you shoot. This is probably gonna look kind of awkward because we have the light coming in. But a lot of times I said, you guys can make pretty good quality videos with just your iPad. So you're gonna set your iPad up on something like here. You know, I could even put it down here on the ledge. Obviously this angle is not correct, but you have the light shining down on your face and then you have the camera right here. So the back of your camera is facing your light source. So the back of your camera should be facing your window. So it comes in and you just have some good lighting. If you're too close, you're probably gonna be overexposed. So make sure you're not not too close. The last question I'm gonna read is from Kristen and she says, how do you take your following from just some Facebook friends and casual acquaintances to really becoming more widely read? I love doing my blog, but I'm always looking for ways to expand my readership. And her blog is kristeninthekitchen.com. So Kristen, this is um, a question that uh, deserves a longer answer than what I'm gonna give you. So one of my bits of advice is to sign up for a blogger conferences that focuses on your niche or niche, however you wanna say it. Fit Blogging was one of the first fitness conferences that I went to and I learned a lot about SEO. Um, I met a lot of different bloggers. I learned about how to take better pictures, uh, you know, just things to just make your blog show up more in Google and all that fun stuff. Uh, so I really highly recommend going to a blogger conference if you can afford it. Try finding one near you so that you don't have to spend all that money on um, flying there. But once you go to one or two or three, you kind of know what you're gonna learn, let's be honest. Um, outside of that, you really have to make sure that you do have good search engine optimization and great photos. That way, if you have great photos, people are going to remember you, they're gonna come back to you. My blog does not have very great photos, I fully acknowledge that, but I'm more into my video stuff. Um, so if you are trying to get your blog to the next level, make sure that you have good pictures. If you're trying to get your videos to the next level, make sure you have good video quality. But those pictures are gonna be able to go on Pinterest, on Tumblr, and those are great resources to drive traffic. You also wanna have great SEO so that when somebody is searching for you know, a slow cooker chicken recipe, your slow cooker chicken recipe comes up first on Google. You're not gonna be there if you do not have uh, the metrics that Google wants you to have. So in order to do that, 
work with someone that is great at helping design your website so that uh, you don't have a lot of fluff so that Google can find what's important. And also you gotta get your blog out there, you know? Uh, you can't just rely on Google to refer people to your blog. You gotta let them know that you exist. That's kind of why my YouTube channel helps my blog out. They tell each other that they exist. Um, but also by leaving comments on other bloggers, I mentioned this before, on their blogs, uh, you know, having an Instagram, having a Facebook, and actively, keeping uh, you know, your content fresh. I said this in the other video, um, and it's just really important to always have new content, and think of every single post that you do as something that you're putting on your resume. Everybody's gonna see it, it's the internet, it's never gonna go away. Um, so in order to take your blog to the next level, go to a conference, make sure that your pictures are up top notch, you've got your social media um, profiles all in the right places and make sure that you're part of the community, comment on other bloggers' blogs, and also maybe even spend a little bit on advertising. Um, Facebook or Pinterest uh, can go a long way. So there you guys have it. I tried to answer as many questions as I could without making this an hour long video. Uh, if you do have more questions, you can always leave them down below. I'll do my best to try to answer more of them. And I hope you guys are enjoying this little series. Uh, follow your passions and thanks for watching. Bye guys.